Strike fighters are among the most versatile of modern combat aircraft. Part fighter, part bomber, these dual-purpose aircraft excel in both offensive and defensive air combat. The single-seat fighter has dominated air combat since the earliest days of aerial warfare to attack ground targets. These dual-purpose fighters, which ably demonstrated its capabilities during Operation Desert Storm in 1991, their two Hornets were on a bombing sortie when they were ambushed by two Iraqi MiG fighters. prowess of the Hornets would have needed to discard their bombs in order to defend themselves in a dogfight. The configuration of modern strike fighters is shaped by their missions. Ground attack falls into several categories. Close air support generally means combat missions in the immediate battle area alongside friendly forces. In these missions, the aircraft are often assigned to attachment. In the interdiction role, the primary targets are military forces deep behind the front lines. These operations include striking such high-value targets as command headquarters, supply bases, vital bridges, enemy artillery, and reserve forces moving up to the front. Since these attacks are carried out deep into enemy territory, the strike fighter must be able to survive the onslaught of anti-air defense systems, such as radar-directed missiles. Modern strike fighters often evade these defenses by relying on low-flying tactics, taking advantage of the terrain to hide from enemy radar. The Harrier vertical takeoff jet is a unique variety of strike fighter. The Harrier was developed in Britain in the 1960s to fulfill a special requirement. In modern air wars, air bases are a prime target. If a runway is destroyed, then high-performance jet fighters are effectively grounded. The Harrier overcomes this dilemma with its vertical take into demonstrated the versatility of the Harrier. Uh, without the Harrier, there would have been no air power for the British Navy and uh, for the British Air Force. So we use that also in the central region and in other places. We can operate away from airfields, away from uh, long strips, either in the woods, on ships, on strips, on a bit of tarmac roads near villages. You can use it any, anywhere. The sophistication of the Harrier's engine means the pilot has a larger array of controls than most fighter aircraft. It is an extra lever, an extra throttle lever, which uh, normally the, for forward flight, the nozzles are pointing aft, and when you want to slow down into the hover, you bring that lever back and the nozzles go down to the vertical or to slow down even quicker forward of the vertical. And then as you slow down and the wing loses lift, then you have to replace that with engine power. So you bring up the engine to high power settings to compensate for that loss of lift. So in effect, when you're in the hover, you're sitting on a column of air from the engine. In spite of the added complexity presented by the engine, the Harrier is popular with its flight crews due to its handling abilities. Well, its fighting made it clear that the Harrier can perform in the fighter role as well. We find that we do a lot more air combat than even the uh, air defense guys. They do radar combat. And has been an enthusiastic supporter of the jump jet concept. The Marines currently fly the AV-8B Harrier II, 
a second generation of the aircraft developed in cooperation by British Aerospace and McDonnell Douglas. The Harrier's adjustable avionics are especially suited for marine pilots. Uh, being a Harrier pilot is kind of special because I think we're the, we're the best we're the best pilots. We're the best tick and rudder men, I think, in military aviation. It's the best of both worlds. I mean, you hover like a helicopter, and you fly straight and level like a regular aircraft. Uh, it's not supersonic like some of the other uh, high-speed uh, fighter aircraft, but it, it maneuvers very well, and it's very versatile. We only need a 2,000-foot aluminum strip to take off. And of course, you can land in the spot the size of a tennis court. The Marines' interest in the Harrier. The Harrier is a complement to Marine operations, since it can operate from small Navy carriers. Marine ground units, it is capable of carrying out deep attack missions as well. This is due in large part to improvements incorporated in the newer AV-8B Harrier II, which has nearly twice the range of the Harrier. Harrier switched missions and began providing close air support for Marine ground forces during the liberation of Kuwait. Possible to locate and destroy relatively small targets such as tanks. And tanks are so heavily armored that they require a direct hit to eliminate. The A-10, although large, is graceful and maneuverable at low altitudes in a manner not found in fast jets. The A-10's unique design came about in part as a result of the Vietnam War. During Vietnam, many expensive fighter bombers were shot down by small arms fire. The A-10 was designed to survive in the close attack environment against machine gun fire. This became very clear in the Gulf War in 1991 where Warthogs flew 8,100 sorties. It's highly protected. We have titanium around the uh, cockpit to protect the pilot. It has dual control surfaces, everything uh, back up. We had one land with no hydraulics, uh, pretty well shot up. It can take a lot of damage and it can still come back and, and maybe fight another day or at least get the asset of the pilot back uh, to, to the friendly side, which is real good. Observation duties. They felt that its slow speed would make it vulnerable to enemy fighter aircraft. But over Kuwait, with Iraqi fighter opposition non-existent, the A-10 was ideal. The main threat to coalition planes was Iraqi anti-aircraft fire. And no other strike aircraft is as well protected as the A-10. Its slow speed and high maneuverability made it ideally suited for pinpoint attacks on Iraqi tanks and other hardened targets. One of the tactics resurrected during the Gulf War was the use of forward air control aircraft, such as Marine OV-10s. They would circle over an area and pick out targets for the oncoming A-10s. Having a forward air controller with binoculars there to confirm that and watch uh, what we were doing really helped out. He was able to say, yeah, those are tanks in the revetments versus us having to go down lower altitude to look before we shot. Uh, you don't want to shoot another tank that somebody else already had and wasted munitions, so that worked out real well. The A-10 can carry a wide variety of bombs. It can be launched miles away from its target, allowing the pilot to stay a safe distance from enemy anti-aircraft guns. As this test footage shows, the Maverick has a devastating effect on tanks. No one would call the A-10 a fighter plane, but it does carry Sidewinder missiles to defend itself from enemy fighters. And although intended to shoot tanks, the Gao-8 cannon can provide air-to-air -air protection. Although the A-10 was intended for short-distance engagements, it is fitted with a refueling receptacle on its nose, which allows it to be refueled in flight to extend its range. Looking good right here. 